Everybody seems to love my last format, so here are two more juices for you guys. Today's juice comes from a game that stems controversy left and right because it involves the freaking Nazis. Call of Duty World War II dev accuses fans of being racist for wanting swastikas in a game. Well, that means the Call of Duty game developer is freaking stupid because swastikas are prevalent during World War II. Why the removal of swastikas in the game? Sledgehammer Games' upcoming Call of Duty World War II has a mode called Nazi Zombies. The mode, however, will not feature any Nazi iconography or symbolism. All swastikas in the mode have been replaced with the German Iron Cross. One user thought a good recourse would be to remove the Nazi from Nazi Zombies if there weren't going to be any swastikas to signify that the zombies are actually Nazis. While well, Sledgehammer Games' co-founder Michael Connery took a bridge with this criticism, accusing the gamer of being a closet Nazi. It was used as a medal in the 1930s by the Nazi regime, which by that time had the swastika as their symbol, plus previous Call of Duty had them. This reads to me as, I want a more racist and hateful symbol that helps me better associate with mass murder. Is that your position, Jack? Wow, way to put words in his mouth. But let's get into a little bit of history here. Swastika has been used for decades now, before Hitler used it. Swastika comes from the Sanskrit word, which basically means good luck. And to this day, it's still a sacred symbol for the Hindus, like me. Hitler has culturally appropriated this freaking symbol into making it a hate symbol that for some reason people in 2016 cannot fucking draw. And thus, here we are, when swastika is a hate symbol and people are afraid to draw it because it might offend someone. Keyword, might. You know, it reminds me of that controversy surrounding the N-word that i said to Tata Mojo. It doesn't matter the context you say it in, it's still racist. Listen up, teachers of America. If you've ever read aloud Huckleberry Finn to your students, you've engaged in an act of racism. There are some people who believe that using the N-word, regardless of context, is wrong and horrendous, and they gotta make sure to wipe it away from memory. That's why you see dumbass news like people removing To Kill a Mockingbird and Huckleberry Finn because of the racial slurs in them. The writers didn't say the N-word because fuck black people, whoever triggered Snowflake that was offended that day. The writer used the N-word because that's what the characters say during that time towards black people. And yes, it's negative. And yes, it sucks. It was supposed to be. You just don't understand what fiction and context are because your minds are warped to think that the word is offensive to you. And of course, using swastikas in a game like Call of Duty World War 2 does not mean that Sledgehammer is racist. It means that the Nazis are evil for culturally appropriating it. And in order to show the Nazis are evil, wouldn't it be more effective if you actually showed the freaking swastika? And I'm speaking as a Hindu here, you'll get my permission, Call of Duty Death. You're not racist for using it in the game, absolutely not. The Nazis are racist for using it in the game. To think that you're being racist because you use a freaking swastika in a video game is fucking ridiculous. Offense can be generated by the fact that you kill people in the game, and like my last video on the subject, the fact that you could kill Nazi black women is indicative of how much offense that this game can generate. And speaking of that dumbass Polygon article, one of the user asked the developer to not have black Nazis, but the developer said, hey, we should be more inclusive. So black female Nazis are acceptable according to this guy. <laughs> if there's someone who asked me to point out internalized racism, I think I'll start with pointing at this guy. Our next news comes from none other than CNN. Oh, CNN fake news galore. We're gonna focus on one of their latest articles that I find very descriptive. Can nudity crack Hollywood's double standards? And by nudity, they're talking about men's nudity. You know, I've made this video quite a while ago and basically discussing about the false dichotomy that feminists always have. The false dichotomy is that feminists think that panty shots of men would have the same intended effect as panty shots of women. Well, not exactly, feminists. Maybe to you, but not to the general audiences. Again, it's about the equality of effect, not the equality of depiction. It's about how to turn women on instead of how men are being depicted. It just so happens that it's enough for women to get turned on by two attractive anime boys to wet their panties. I can see that. Hell, I can see how the fangirls wet their pants the moment Akiko Senpai asks if you want to be his girl. I want to be his girl. With nearly all black female-led casts, both HBO's Insecure and feature film Girl Strip are clearly breaking all types of color and gender barriers. And so many black women cry in tears of joy now that the entertainment industry Senpai has noticed them. As if they haven't noticed them already. But it's what's happening behind the scenes that is changing the game on a more interesting frontier. Female writers like Insecure's Issa Rae and Rika Rifinoja and Tracy Oliver's of Ghost Strip are leveling the playing field when it comes to male and female nudity by putting more naked men in our screens. It's just what Hollywood needs. Why? Because we want a revenge against men. Screw those men with those anime panty shots. We're gonna take over Hollywood by showing how we are about as equally degenerate to those weebs. Nice tactic, guys! I think one of the ways to fight against anime degeneracy is real-world degeneracy. 
Again, you can't fight fire with fire in this case. Men or women are turned on by different things. Here's the problem with this article. This article is built on a basis that there's a double standard existing in Hollywood and TV industry, and that double standard is men can't get any roles without the needs of stripping, but women absolutely need to strip in order to progress into Hollywood. Which begs the question, is Hollywood and the TV industry the equivalent of freaking Pornhub? The way Hollywood works, if a male actor doesn't want to go nudity, there are still an array of other roles out there for him, but refusing nudity for actresses can still mean unemployment. Here's the thing, if that's true, then Hollywood and TV shows are pricks, and they do need to get women roles that don't consist of them stripping, but how do you know if that is true? We have a couple of anecdotal stories in the article, but that's it. Anecdotal stories do not equal a rampant trend. I see nice, strong, well-written women in Hollywood and the TV industry. They don't need to strip. If that is true to every woman and every actresses, what about underage actresses? Is Hollywood and the entertainment industry the equivalent of porn industry, except without the porn? I don't know. I don't know much about Hollywood. What I do know is this article is very fucking sketchy in its presentation. For far too long, naked women have become such a staple in TV and film that it's hard to notice, much less quantify the inequality unfolding right before our eyes. As in, we don't know if the inequality existed, but we're just gonna say that it is anyway. And look, I'm gonna put this on the basis that it is. Fine. Hollywood and TV industry are sexist for objectifying women all the time and require them to strip. How do you combat this inequality? while well, someone had the idea to literally shove dicks to people's faces. With HBO's Insecure, creator Ray isn't hiding the fact that she's pushing for a change in the second season of the show. I'm just being a red-blooded woman, and I know what I want to see in watching a television show. It's dicks and ass, she said. I always notice, why is this woman completely naked if he still has his pants on and his shirt on? So you did that out of revenge for the entertainment industry and not you know, to make an entertaining show or something. And like I said in my last video, equality of depiction is not the same as equality of effect. You need to see what women are turned on with instead of what are being depicted in the media. The goal here is to make both men and women happy. But your goal is to say, ha ha, fuck you men. You think you could get away with panty shots? Well, here are dicks for you. It's certainly not a question viewers would be asking when they watch Girl Strip. The film, which is laugh out loud, fall down, and roll on the floor funny, draws direct comparisons to The Hangover. But instead of seeing topless and bikini-clad women, we see Coffee Cerebu in all his chocolate glory. Let me ask you this. Do you think this would make women in the world happy? Do you think that women in general want to see dicks being shoved down to their faces? And here's one sketchy part. Although it may seem like advocating for more male nudity would make men feel just as objectified as women. As in, we're completely aware that we're being a bunch of hypocritical jackasses and fuck you for pointing that out. Insecure and girl strip call out important institutional barriers that women in particular face. The kinds of institutional barriers that make the TV industry look like X videos except without the porn. Seriously, are American TV shows so desperate for views they have to shove freaking nudes up to people's faces? And if the American TV shows really look like amateur porns without the actual porn, then shouldn't it be like the porn industry? As in, women are more successful and have better paychecks in it? So seeing more women in the buff on screen isn't just a matter of eye candy. It's also about helping change the unfair challenge that my friend and many other actresses have faced while trying to land their big break. Wow, previously with ships, now naked men are serious business. It's about actresses not having to use their naked bodies as resumes and being able to engage in more multidimensional roles. Viewers wait, 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 wait. Implying that they haven't gotten multidimensional roles. Implying that the TV industry is only gonna write women as sex objects. Implying that the TV industry doesn't want to see women win as actual human beings. My BS detectors go in ding! The last time I checked, women already have multi-dimensional roles. They have significant roles to play in American TV series that I watch, or the Western TV series that I watch. Breaking Bad, Sherlock, the CW superhero shows, Netflix shows. Name me one TV series in America that looks like a video straight out of Pornhub except without the plot. I don't believe for a goddamn second that the Hollywood or the TV series scene are the same as freaking Pornhub. Don't get me wrong, Hollywood has lots of problems, lack of originality being one of them, but I doubt that it can be solved by shoving tits to people's faces, and if you know my channel's history, you'd be surprised to find me say that. The lack of originality in Hollywood storytelling and how a lot of movies are based on books and cartoons and anime, there's a good reason why people are moving away from Hollywood and start watching Japanese anime. Say what you want about anime, they have more originality than anything modern Hollywood has ever spawned. And no, TV shows that contain men's dicks are not gonna solve the double standards anytime soon, or at least the double standards that you perceive, and nor do women shoving their tits up people's face would solve Hollywood's biggest problems. If the plot is still garbage and unoriginal and the editing is garbage, then Hollywood is still garbage, regardless of the tits. Seriously, I'm starting to worry if TV shows are turning to freaking Pornhub if that's how these writers view it. 
And speaking of Pornhub and male nudity, here we have another interesting juice. You all probably have heard of this game called Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. A game that is definitely not for me, but everybody has played it, including Markiplier, Sky Williams, etc. People played the game so much, it topped into Steam's top 10 charts and sell like freaking hotcakes, proving that less players have influence in visual novels that are meant to be a joke. Anyway, I'm not really interested in a visual novel game about dating dads because I already have a much better visual novel dating simulator about dating hot boys. It's called Persona 3 Portable and conveniently Persona 3 is the best boys. Still, I see Dream Daddy the same way I see Goat Simulator. It's gonna be a meme game that is short-lived in popularity is gonna dip down in age as time went on, unlike Kato Shoujo, which is a brilliant, timeless masterpiece. I would love to see how the people who are complaining about those horrendous visual novels and dating simulators with sexy women feel about this game. Would they feel the same way? Because ladies, I'm open for both. This game topped the Steam charts, good for you. Congratulations. I'm happy. I hope you enjoy this game and that, of course, includes you, Anita. Despite all of your numerous criticisms about women objectification, I hope that you can fap in peace with that game. So I think that's all for today's shoes. Thank you for sticking around, you guys. And huge thanks to Lucas Paintner for the pledge on Patreon and Brian Thomas for the donations off of PayPal. You guys are fantastic. And also one more for the very cute fan art by at Hikikomori. Thank you so much. It's pretty good. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you could go ahead, click like button, and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me on Patreon. And thanks for watching.